what's the relationship between asthma severity and airway oscillometry measures? So this is a study that we published, uh, Peter Williamson, who now works in Perth, um, nine years ago. And we compared healthy volunteers in gray, mild to moderate asthma in red, and severe asthma in blue. So you can see here, as you go from normal to mild to moderate and severe, you get a proportional increase in total air resistance. When you look at central air resistance at 20 hertz, I think this is really telling because there was no change at all. So I think this slide teaches beautifully that the most important thing in asthma as you go from normal to mild to moderate to severe is this is a disease of small airways and not of large airways. And that's a lovely example. Now, if you look at the peripheral resistance between 5 and 20 hertz, the difference between this and this, you can see that also proportionately increases as well. And if you look at peripheral airway reactance or compliance, that also shows a commensurate change in the negative direction um, as you go from healthy, mild to moderate to severe. Now, if you're still not convinced, um, here's another cohort, which uh, my current fellow, Chris Kuo, published in Annals of Allergy, Asthma and Immunology. A smaller cohort, albeit 46, mean F in 180%, 600 micrograms of inhaled steroid, 65% were taking LABA, 11% LAMA, and 40% LTRA. So, you know, more on the moderate end of, of the asthma spectrum. So here we've got our old friend ACQ, and here we've got the AX using a cutoff of less than one and greater than one. And again, you can see that um, the difference in ACQ exceeded the minimum important difference of 0.5. In fact, it's nearly a, a one unit difference, which is big. And you see the same thing here. This is using R519, which is what the tremor flow generates rather than R5, R20, but it's virtually the same thing. R5, R19 and R5, R20 are interchangeable. Again, you can see a nearly a one point difference in ACQ. So let's tie that up before we move on to COPD. So what we've shown so far is that resistance and compliance are concordant in asthma. They go in the same direction. Okay. So when resistance fall, um, compliance increases as well. Small airways dysfunction, as you've seen, is common across all asthma severities. So you see this not only in severe asthma, but also in mild to moderate asthma. Small airways dysfunction is uh, related to poor asthma control in terms of steroid use, salbutamol consumption, or the asthma control questionnaire. And the peripheral airway resistance and the area under the reactance curve are sensitive markers of response to treatment with small particle inhalers. So let's just look at a head to head. This is a review that I wrote, you might want to read in respiratory medicine on the utility of uh, measuring um, spirometry and airway oscillometry. So I think this table is useful. So the outputs, you already know what you get in airway oscillometry and spirometry. They both have an excellent signal to noise ratio. I think spirometry is not patient friendly because it's quite hard to do a forced expiratory maneuver, particularly in COPD, breathing out all the way to residual volume. Um, the breathing pattern is measured at tidal, normal, quiet breathing, and it's a forced expiratory maneuver. Now, how many patients do you see normally in everyday life doing a forced expiratory maneuver, whereas everyone breathes normally at tidal, tidal volume? You can um, distinguish between large and small airways very easily with airway oscillometry, but it's much more difficult to do with spirometry, even measuring FEF 2575. The one advantage that spirometry does have is it's relatively inexpensive in terms of the machine compared to airway oscillometry. Um, they're both portable, at least with the tremor flows portable, and they're both um, uh, regulatory approved by the FDA. 